Shaquille O'Neal has officially completed the campaign of life and is now doing side quests. Ball player, actor, doctor, investor, DJ, police officer? Shaq was always a big fan of side quests. He had his own video game and released four studio albums before he had a championship ring. At Louisiana State University, Shaq was a two-time All-American and a two-time SEC Player of the Year. The 7'1", 330-pound beast got drafted as the number one overall pick to the Orlando Magic in 1992, which led to an amazing first season earning him Rookie of the Year. He became known for his powerful dunks that would sometimes bring down the entire backboard. This amazing height and power combination revolutionized the game and helped Shaq dominate the league. His real dominance came when he joined the Los Angeles Lakers in 1996 alongside Kobe Bryant. The two were an unstoppable force that won three consecutive NBA championships in 2000, 2001, and 2002. Then Shaq secured his fourth in 2006 with the Miami Heat. 15 NBA All-Star selections, four NBA championships, three NBA Finals MVPs, two NBA scoring titles and one Hall of Fame induction. Shaq completed the main story. Now it's time to look through all of the other side jobs Shaq had outside of the NBA, starting with him becoming an orchestra conductor. Stay hydrated. During his time at the Boston Celtics, the PR team approached Shaq with the idea of conducting the Boston Props Orchestra, a world-famous orchestra founded back in 1885. This wasn't just for show either. Shaq attended a full rehearsal and learned the ropes of a professional conductor. Shaq would take the baton and lead the orchestra in three songs, with the final song being We Are the Champions by Queen, aiming to rally the fans in the audience around the team in the coming season. Also, Shaq became the tallest conductor in the Boston Props history. And speaking of music, Shaq has bars. Did you know Shaq released four studio albums and two compilation albums? In 1992, Shaquille would make an appearance on Arsenio Hall's Late Night Talk Show, sharing the stage with his favorite rapper at the time. Foo Schnickens. The performance caught the attention of Jive Records, who reached out to O'Neal with an impressive offer, $10 million for three albums. While Shaq never intended to pursue a serious career as a rapper, he saw the opportunity as a chance to collaborate with his hip-hop idols. His debut album, Shaq Diesel, quickly gained traction, reaching the 25th spot on the Billboard Hot 200 charts and selling over 1 million copies, officially making it certified platinum. Shaq's music ventures also featured appearances from legendary artists like Biggie Smalls, Ice Cube, Nas, and even Michael Jackson. Now Shaq considers his rap career more of a hobby than a serious project. I wish I made $10 million from my favorite hobby. But he isn't just talented on the mic, he can also dance. Look at how flawlessly he can move that huge body. After that little break dance, we got to see even more of his moves at the 2009 NBA All-Star Game alongside the professional dance group, the Jabberwockies. The big Shaq is himself, Shaquille O'Neal. You thought his music career was done? Wrong. Shaq is quite literally the biggest DJ in the world. DJ Diesel is a very active bass music DJ who performs at festivals all summer. Messing around with turntables was a hobby that dates back to Diesel's teenage years. He never did any performances, only for some friends. O'Neal was introduced to Tomorrow World in 2014 by his then girlfriend Letitia. I went to a concert five years ago, Tomorrow World, and I saw half a million people just jamming. And it gave me something that I've been missing since I retired. It gave me that adrenaline boost. And when the beats drop, you see a half a million people doing this. Shaq wanted that adrenaline rush for himself. He got connected with a booking agency who hired him as a celebrity DJ. And he took offense to that, assuming he didn't know what he was doing. After a few club appearances, he made them an offer. Give me one chance to rock a crowd, 100,000. If I don't do well, fire me and I'll never do it again. This landed him a spot at Lost Lands in 2018, where he absolutely shocked the crowd. From there, he became a go-to for major festivals. Tomorrowland, Lollapalooza, Hard Summer. He even became known as the dubstep dad. I could have chose any style of music. I like bass music. I'm seven foot, 350. I consider myself hard. When I played on the basketball court, I was hard. I like the hard drops. I like the kids that bang their heads on rail. 
I like mosh pits. And the coolest part about his DJ career is that he does it all for free. That's right, it's truly just a hobby for him. But make no mistake, Shaq is no dummy when it comes to getting paid, because he isn't doing all those commercials for free. And neither am I. So let me tell you about today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. I want to tell you about the easiest way to get in on some NBA Finals action with Underdog Fantasy and their Pick'em game. Just find your favorite player, or any player, pick higher or lower on one of their stats, and you can win up to 20 times your money in one night. Underdog keeps everything super simple with their intuitive website and mobile app. Pick between two to five players to fill your pick'em entry, get every pick right, and you can net yourself some serious cash. For game four of the NBA Finals, I got Jokic going higher than 41 and a half points and assists. I got Michael Porter going higher than seven rebounds and assists. And I got Jimmy Butler going higher than 26 and a half points. Y'all can check back with me and see how I did. Use code Patrick CC and get your first deposit doubled up to $100 by Underdog. Underdog Fantasy is available in many states across the U.S. Check this map to see if you're in an eligible state. Again, download the Underdog Fantasy app, use code PATRICKCC, and get those picks in. Thanks, Underdog Fantasy. When you think of Shaq endorsing a brand, what comes to mind? Gold Bond, Papa John's, Burger King, Pepsi, Wheaties, Lyft, Radio Shack, Epson Printer, Age of Beard, Nintendo DS, Tamadachi Life. The list goes on and on as Shaq has endorsed well over 100 brands in his life. But the one I think of first is Icy Hot. And the reason behind it is pretty funny. I had a thigh bruise and the Lakers trainer put some Icy Hot on my thighs. And I was having a great game, but my boys were starting to get real hot. And then I'm running and they're getting too hot. I had to call a timeout and tell the trainer, hey man, my balls are on fire. After that incident, Shaq got in touch with Icy Hot, and things took off from there. They worked out a sweet deal where Shaq not only starred in their commercials, but also became a part owner of the company. But that's not the first time Shaq liked a product so much he became an owner of the company. In fact, he's done this over 50 times. He's a partial owner of 155 Five Guys Burger restaurants, 17 Annie Ann's Pretzel restaurants, 150 car washes, 40 24-hour fitness centers, a shopping center, a movie theater, and several Las Vegas nightclubs. But his relationship with the general insurance is the closest to his heart. You see, back in 1989, Shaq was broke. He spent all of his money on a $1,500 used Bronco, but couldn't drive off the lot until he had insurance. Shaq went to every major insurer, but he couldn't afford them, until he came across a little building that said, The General, who gave him quality insurance at an affordable price. He was a customer from that day until nearly 30 years later, where he became a brand ambassador and part owner of the company. But he didn't stop at endorsing brands. He even made his own products. Ever heard of Soda Shack? Teaming up with Arizona Beverages, Shack would launch his own line of low-calorie, all-natural cream soda called Soda Shack, releasing four flavors, vanilla, blueberry, strawberry, and orange. Sporting a low cost, as most Arizona brand drinks do, and featuring a cutout of Shack's face, many were excited for their release, but some were critical. The soda came in a 23 and a half ounce can. On the nutritional facts label, it revealed that each can has three servings and it is sweetened with cane sugar. With 90 calories per serving, that meant that each can contained a total of 270 calories and packed a whopping 72 grams of sugar. Even through all the criticism seven years after being discontinued, Soda Shack still has many fans hoping for a return. But this wasn't even his first sugary treat. Mr. Big was the name of his 1995 candy bar. The standard bar is made of a layered vanilla wafer coated in caramel, peanuts, and rice crisps while being smothered in a chocolate coating. The bar is the length of two standard size bars, around 8 inches long, which is also the same size as Shaq's. Did you know he also made his own video game? Shaq Fu is a 2D fighting game, similar to early Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter games, starring Shaq as the main character. Published by EA and released to gaming systems such as the Sega Genesis and Super NES on October 28, 1994. The plot of the game is that Shaq walks into a dojo while heading to a charity basketball game in Japan. After speaking to a martial arts master, Shaq goes to another dimension, where he must rescue a young boy named Nezu from an evil mummy. If you don't think this is very interesting, a lot of people would agree with you. Shaq Fu in recent years has been regarded as one of the worst video games of all time by many game critics. Nintendo Power had 12 staff members vote in a list for the 10 worst games of all time, which placed Shaq Fu at the third worst place on their list. Yet still, the game got a reboot in 2018 for PlayStation 4, Shaq Fu A Legend Reborn, which was actually received very well by the gaming community. The beautiful graphics and cutscenes had us convinced that Shaq could actually beat people up in real life. Oh wait, he can. He proved that to us with multiple appearances in the ring. 
Shaq has always been a huge fan of professional wrestling, and he's had some epic moments in the ring across different promotions. Back in 1994, he made an appearance on World Championship Wrestling, where he presented the title belt to the winner of the WCW World Heavyweight Championship between Hulk Hogan and Ric Flair. Then in 2009, he took on the role of guest host for WWE's Monday Night Raw, in which he would find himself getting into a scuffle with the legendary wrestler, The Big Show, creating a feud that lasted for almost a year. But he wasn't done there. In 2016, he surprised everyone by participating in his first legitimate match. He entered as a celebrity competitor in the Battle Royale at WrestleMania 32, eliminating Damian Sando, and had another confrontation with Big Show before being eliminated himself. And most recently, for the promotion AEW in 2021, Shaq teamed up with Jade Cargill to take on Cody Rhodes and Red Velvet. During the match, things got crazy when Cody Rhodes took him out with a flying crossbody, sending Shaq crashing through two tables ringside. Shaq's acting was so good, he could have fooled us into thinking he was a full-time wrestler. Oh, and speaking of acting, O'Neill has spent some time on the big screen as well. His first major film role was in the movie Kazam, where he played a 5,000-year-old genie who emerges from a magical boombox to grant a young boy three wishes. And honestly, the film sucked. But he still managed to pocket a cool $7 million for his time. Pretty good month if you ask me. Most of his acting career beyond that wasn't really acting because he often just played himself. As you can imagine, it's hard to cast a seven-foot superhuman as just another character. He had guest appearances on Curb Your Enthusiasm, My Wife and Kids, and The Parkers. He also had fun cameo roles in movies such as Freddy Got Fingered, Jack and Jill, and Scary Movie 4. But that's not all. Shaq even lent his voice to animated versions of himself on several occasions, and taking voice acting roles in multiple animated films like The Lego Movie. But he isn't limited to just guest appearances and cameos. He also has headlined a few of his own reality TV shows. Shaq Life is still an ongoing series that provides an inside look into his family life, but the more interesting ones were Shaq's Big Challenge and Shaq Versus. Shaq's Big Challenge documented his efforts to help six severely obese middle school aged children lose weight and gain a healthy lifestyle. And Shaq Versus was basically him challenging other professional athletes at their own sports, which was viewed by multiple millions of people every episode. For some reason, watching a seven foot man do anything besides play basketball was entertaining. Now it's pretty common for an NBA player to have their own signature shoe, but O'Neal made a shocking decision that let us know exactly what kind of person he truly is. With an amazing first season in the NBA underway, Shaq caught the eye of Reebok and secured a significant multi-year deal with them worth $15 million. This partnership led to the creation of two original shoes, with the first one being the Shaq Attack, released during his rookie year in 1992. Over time, the Shaq Attack would release four more iterations. In 1995, the iconic Shaq Gnosis was introduced, marking another milestone in Shaq's collaboration with Reebok. His eight-figure empire was building until he got a reality check from a fan. While leaving the arena after a game, a lady approached Shaq complaining about the price of his current Reebok model shoes. I had a Reebok deal, 40 for five. And I'm leaving the arena one day and this lady, is, she's ripping me into a, you mother us, uh, charging these babies all this money for the shoes. So I had like a 2000 in my pocket. I was like, ma'am, I don't make the prices. Here you go. And she smacked the money in my hand. Why don't you mother make a shoe that's affordable? And I thought about it. And I was like, you know what? She's right. That day, Shaq cut ties with Reebok and started his brand. He went to his favorite store, Walmart, and they made a deal to make his shoes as affordable as possible. The price ranged from as low as $12 to around $30. Since then, they've sold over 400 million pairs. Instead of trying to create the most hype shoe to compete with Jordan, he did the opposite. Because of this, some people even tried to make fun of Shaq. And unfortunately, the kids that wore his sneakers would oftentimes get picked on as well, on the basis that Shaq wasn't cool enough or iconic enough to compete with Jordans. But when you think about it, he did a really great thing for kids all around the world who struggled financially but needed a decent pair of basketball shoes. And he still made a ton of money. His impressive net worth of over $400 million shows that he's made all the right moves from the start. He's been a very savvy investor, buying in early to companies like Google and Apple back in the late 90s. However, his real estate portfolio is perhaps the most 
impressive. And no, it's not because he owns a bunch of mansions in the hills. He has taken on a number of different real estate development projects to provide affordable housing for those in need. He built the largest 80-20 mixed income project in New Jersey, which is where 20% of the apartments are considered affordable. In Colorado, he was a part of a deal that purchased 1,407 subsidized Section 8 housing units with the intent to remodel and offer them for below the market rate. My goal is to eventually own $1 billion in affordable housing. He basically wants to do the same thing he did with sneakers, not own a few flashy and expensive properties, but rather thousands of affordable units to help as many people as possible. His servitude towards the community explains his strong interest in law enforcement. Did you know that Shaq is a police officer in multiple states? In 2002, Shaquille attended the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Reserve Academy, trying to become a SWAT team member. The specific requirements for the specialized unit included the ability to scale a rope 100 feet in the air. O'Neill had completed the conditioning tests, the sit-ups, the push-ups, had endured the verbal assaults and disciplinary penalties, but he was just too heavy to accomplish the rope climb. He tried it 12 times. The last one, he reached 75 feet in the air before plummeting to the ground. Despite his failure, he became a reserve officer with the Los Angeles Port Police, receiving sufficient training to carry a gun and ride as a second man in a Port Police car with senior officers but it didn't stop there. When he got traded to the Heat, he worked as a reserve officer in Miami from 2003 to 2005. His annual salary, $1. However, a leak of his Miami Beach police questionnaire definitely raised a few problems. The reason being, he treated it like a joke. Under special skills he possessed, he said, laptop computer, binoculars, master of surveillance. For primary occupation, he put, Grand Theft Auto investigations. Now, as someone who would be considered legally able to carry a gun and serve the community, you would think they wouldn't allow jokes on the application. However, Shaq never abused his power, so I guess it's okay. In 2005, he was honored with the title of U.S. Deputy Marshal. In 2013, Shaq was officially sworn in as a part-time Golden Beach, Florida police officer. In 2015, he was sworn in as a reserve police officer at the Doral, Florida Police Department. In 2016, Shaquille O'Neal was sworn in as a Clayton County, Georgia Sheriff's Deputy. In 2019, he was sworn in as an Auxiliary Deputy with the Broward County, Florida Sheriff's Department. In 2020, he was named a Special Reserve Deputy in St. Martin Parish, Louisiana. Just about every city he visits, he taps in with the local PD to see what's going on. And I'm sure by now you're probably wondering, since he's a police officer in all these different counties, has he ever done any actual police work? Although he does have some stories of kicking in doors and finding dead bodies, Shaq seems to be more of a just-in-case type officer. However, he does have one pretty good traffic stop story. Darius Miles, former small forward for the Los Angeles Clippers, was one day running late for practice. As he was flying down the 405, he looked in the rear view and saw flashing lights. It was an unmarked police truck with tinted windows. I knew I was speeding, so I pull over and I roll the window down. And I'm reaching over into the glove compartment to get my papers. Then I hear this big booming voice. Where are you going, boy? I turn to look out the window and I can't even see this dude's face. He's so big. Then he bends down and looks in the window. Big dumbass grin on his face. It's Shaq. I'm like, yo, I'm going to practice. You made me late. He taps the side of my truck, turns around and says, don't worry about it. I'll pay your fine. Just holler at me. Shaq's got one of those old school police lights that you put on the hood of your car like you see on cops. He gets in, laughing his ass off, waving at me. As if there wasn't anything more impressive to add to his resume, the college dropout became a doctor. Shaq made a promise to his mom that he would eventually go back and complete his bachelor's degree since he pursued his MBA dreams. True to his word, Shaq fulfilled that promise in the year 2000 and graduated with a BA in general studies with a minor in political studies. While this accomplishment would satisfy most, Shaq isn't like most. Just five Five years later, O'Neill pursued further education. He earned online a Master of Business Administration degree through the University of Phoenix, saying, It's just something to have on my resume for when I get back into reality. Someday I might have to put down a basketball and have a regular 9 to 5 like everybody else. Towards the end of his playing career, he began to work on a doctorate at Barry University, eventually completing the program and receiving a Doctor of Education degree in Human Resource Development, making him formally Dr. Shaquille O'Neal. So the big question that everybody wants to know, what will Shaq do next? Well, probably a little bit of everything.